everybody. Um, it's me, Rylan. Um, today is Friday, September 16th, um, 2021 at 11.52 p.m. So it's basically midnight. Um, but I wanted to say hello because it's been a while since I made a video, but I wanted to make a video today to celebrate a victory. Um, today specifically, I guess because it's almost tomorrow, but like in this moment right now, I am 397 days clean of self-harm. So that is a little over a month. Um, my one year anniversary was on August 15th, 2022 and oh shit. Okay. So it's the 16th. So it's been a year, a year and a month. Okay. I didn't put that together until now. So that's woohoo. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to talk about it because I haven't talked about self-harm in a while. Um, just because it's a very personal thing, right? Uh, I have videos talking about self-harm when I was still self-harming. And I think I have a video when I made it to like three months. And then I made one um, when I was a year clean. So basically, um, my history with self-harm is, is I started in 2016. And I had a year clean. Um, it was March... What was it? It was, I only self-harmed for three months. It was, so it was like March 16th, excuse me, March 2nd, 2016. Um, and then it was like 400 something days in 2018. So since then, it has taken me five years since I relapsed way back in 2017 to get back to this year point. Um, it has been seven years of fighting. I've had eight relapses, but I'm here and I made it and I'm really proud of myself. And I wanted to make a video just as an update, but also like share some of the coping strategies that I used in order to get this far. As I said, it took me five years to get back to a year. That's a very long time, <laughs> um, but I made it. And what did I do on my anniversary? I don't know. I probably ordered pizza, um, but I did I did do something the night before on my anniversary because I, I knew that I had these laying around and I wanted to have, I'll just show you. <clears throat> so this is a box obviously right um but within this box is a lot of secrets and shame and struggling and pain can i do it so within this box are all of my bandages and my band-aids and Neosporin that I had um, saved up. I wrote on here, I had um, 15 unopened boxes of band-aids, four open, three tapes, two ace bandages, and two Neosporin. So this is hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. Now when I counted all of these things, I think it was like I said the day before my anniversary, it was <laughs> extremely jarring um, because I had to go around like different places in my house and like find them, um, find where I had put different bandages. Um, and when I had it all laid out on my floor in front of me, I was just like, okay, that's the only, that's the only thing I can say is I was like, fuck. Um, so I, I, I got myself 
um, a sobriety coin thing. I already had one like that you can find on Amazon. It's like this little um, golden medallion that says like the day my life began and then it has like a tree and then you can like write what the like your sobriety date is. Um, but I already somebody gave me that um, before in 2017 when I got clean. So I was actually able to find this and I don't know how cameras work. Is this gonna be like backwards? Maybe, who knows? I have no idea. We'll find out together when we watch this back, right? Um, but I decided to make myself this necklace and it says 8 15 22 and then five years of fighting this is all custom made i decided to write these words and then i wrote on the back i am a warrior with a period and then i have the number 72. and the reason that i have 72 on here is because that is the amount of times that i caught myself the last time I self-harmed in um, on August 15th, 2021. And I thought it was important that I put that on my necklace just as a reminder because that um, episode or whatever you wanna call it, I mean, that's, it was really extreme. It was really difficult. It was probably one of the worst um, incidences of, of self-harm, like at least top three that I've ever had before. Um, so I have that, I don't wear it because I already wear like three necklaces, but I found that it's really helpful like to hold. And so, as I said, I wanted to share like a couple things that had helped me through recovery. I wish there was a secret potion or spell or words that I could tell anybody or words that I could have even heard um, to help me get through um, recovery because it's fucking hard. And if you have been using self-harm as a, a coping mechanism for years or potentially your whole life, it's extraordinarily hard to break. But these are some of the things that really helped me. Um, I really got into fidget toys um, of different textures. I found maybe if I was feeling activated or triggered, whatever word you wanna use, um, not because it was like to replace the urge of like wanting to like grab something and hurt myself with, but it'd be a way to ground myself. I'm really big on finding ways to ground myself. So for example, I have these little balls and they actually, they light up. That was just a plus, I had no idea. I just like went on Target and I think I typed in like spiky balls. <laughs> um, but these have been really helpful because they make noise and they, they feel, they feel good. And I notice in certain times of distress, um, certain textures will help. So I also have these. So just kind of things to fiddle with and keep my hands busy. Like maybe if you are someone that does get angsty. I know some of us, like when we've quit smoking, you know, they say like, find something to do with your hands or something like that. And this, this, this is nice. I actually use these sometimes if I'm feeling anxious and I'm watching television um, because it's really important. These are like stretchy strings and this one happens to be textured. And this one is a different texture. And this one is a different texture. So I find that I can get really anxious literally in any moment of being alive and breathing air as a human being. So I, whenever I'm in therapy, um, I usually will be playing with one of these. It's really helpful sometimes if I just like wrap this around my hand. I don't know why, but it's like very grounding to have something like in the palm of my hand. Um, when I'm, like I said, when I'm watching TV or movies that maybe is making me anxious, I'll be playing with one of these. And also something that's really important about coping mechanisms and grounding skills is to be using these things when we're not in crisis, because it teaches our brain and our body to associate something that's comforting and something that's kind of mindless. And so when we're in those moments of distress and our brains are like, oh my God, what the fuck do I do? You can maybe remember that this was really calming when you were watching 
reruns of Friends or for me I really like watching New Girl that's like my that's my I'm not okay show that I'm gonna watch to calm me down and just like one more thing I like found this a couple weeks ago like a month ago it's like this little uh it's like a little caterpillar so you can you know lots of things so I've just found that playing with things in my hands, finding different ways to use textures, I also have like a regular fidget spinner, is really helpful, okay? Right, so that's a lot of tactical stuff that I said. Another tactical thing that helps me is stuffed animals. I'm older than I look, and there's a lot of stigma I feel like about stuffed animals. And actually my therapist today literally told me, she's like, I like stuffed animals too. And I was like, no way. Because I was telling her, she's like a newer therapist. This was like our fifth session today that this is my stuffed animal. And I don't have, I'm not dissociated necessarily when I'm holding, her name is Ella, Ella the elephant. I know I'm really original and smart. Um, but just touching her, I don't have to be in a dissociative state. It's just self-soothing. And what I really like about Ella is just like there's different, again, textures on her trunk. Um, so yeah, just hanging on to something and like crying into her has been helpful. Sometimes like rocking back and forth is a very like primal thing. So that might help us see what feels right. Maybe back and forth or side to side or... I like to call it around the world, just going around in circles. Sometimes that feels really good because it kind of like mocks what we felt like in the womb, but that's like psychoeducational stuff that I'm not going to talk about. So stuffed animals, right? And then I have my headphones. Boop. Music has been extraordinarily helpful for me in my self-harm recovery. Um, I have a couple different playlists for different reasons. I just slurred my words like Moira Rose Crab Levels. Um, a couple different playlists. I have one specifically for when I am dissociated. I actually called it Dissociation Station. And it has a lot of different songs that I very like mindfully made when I again was in an okay place. And I think it's like six hours worth of songs, but I was sure to choose music that would in this moment when I'm dissociating, that would have different beats, that would have um, different artists singing, and that it was like a very varied mix of music. Whereas I have a playlist that I created that I listened to before and after therapy. And I was sure with that playlist to choose songs, I mean, I don't have a number, I'm not gonna say like 100 like beats per minute, like 100 BPM, but I was sure to choose out of all the songs that I own, songs that are like under a certain frequency that I can feel with my body. Like I said, I'm not, I didn't count like, you know what I mean? So just songs that were very calm and slow and didn't have any drums, didn't have any like loud guitar or anything, just like Ruth, uh, Ruth B. There's a lot of Aurora. Aurora really helps me. I like James Arthur, but like that's, not a musician that I would put in this playlist to like bring me down and 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 um and ground me. So those are just like three things that I mentioned that really helped me. Also another thing is essential oils. Um my favorite is jasmine and what I would do is I would actually put jasmine on a cotton ball um and put it on top of Ella's head so that when I go to bed or just like I said when I was stressed out I could just breathe in and smell that smell. I also have a necklace, an aromatherapy necklace, as well as bracelet in the next room that I can put a couple drops of whatever I want in there and I wear it. And when I'm stressed out, I just lift it up and give it a sniff. Um, and one final tip, if you happen to be out and about um, and maybe you are dissociated and you need to ground yourself Something surprisingly, it, it seems severe, but I don't think so because, you know, I want to be present in the moment. So I kind of just think like whatever I need to do, I need to do. Is I found that uh, Purell or just, you know, whatever um, 
antibacterial hand stuff because it's filled with alcohol it has a really strong fucking smell so sometimes when i'm out of it and these are like in extreme circumstances because it truly is extraordinarily unpleasant i'll demonstrate for you right because i'll just put like a little bit in whatever i could do more we'll do more just because why not right rub it in here we go oh It'll just sit there and that'll bring me back. That will bring me back. Yeah, so that's a, that's a skill that you, <coughs> that you can use as well, especially if you're in public. Um, I live in New York, so when I'm on the subway, I can try and discreetly do that and just be like, you know, um, but that's been very helpful as well. And last but not least, cold showers. Cold showers. I can't tell you how many times that has brought me down from like, let me get my shit, get out the band-aids, let me get my tools to like, okay, I'm feeling a little better. I'm not going to self-harm. I'm still not okay, but I'm not in that state of crisis. So that falls kind of under DBT skills, which is a type of therapy. It stands for dialectical behavior therapy. Um, which was originally created for individuals like me that have borderline personality disorder and it falls under tip skills and that one specifically is temperature. So lowering your body temperature and taking a really cold shower is something that literally just like shocks your body into a state of having to be aware. And so when I've been in those extreme crisis situations of literally planning like it's going to happen, I've been able to try and take a shower and honestly nine times out of 10 and I'd say the ninth time if it didn't work I would find another skill to use but those nine times out of 10 I would be taken down a lot more in my emotions and that's because that's it's just scientific so that's something that I highly suggest or even like running your hand under cold water but if you can take a cold ass shower and I suggest lowering the the temperature gradually instead of hopping in and having it be really cold um is something that i found very helpful um like i'll just be standing there i've also found that having the water run specifically on my chest and turning towards the water as absolutely uncomfortable and horrible as it feels it is something that will bring me back to the present moment and like i said as i'm in the shower i will gradually start to turn it down and make the water colder but i'm sure to kind of you know gradually do that because otherwise if you just turn it to cold I, I don't know that might be bad for your heart quite frankly um so 18 minutes in i've talked i've shared the things that have worked for me in order to get this far obviously everything's not gonna work for everyone but i look at that box and I just I feel a lot of emotions um I hope I never have to use that box again but I'm also aware that self-harm and mental illness and all of the things that I'm dealing with are pervasive and I will deal with them the rest of my life so can I sit here right now and tell you that I'll never self-harm again absolutely not I don't believe that I'm not going to make that promise to myself or to you as much as I care about you for watching this video but I'm more of the belief that I am in recovery. I'm doing my best. I've made it to a year, which was literally my goal. And I'm just going to keep trying because I can't promise that if something tragic or horrific were to happen to me, that, that that may not be something I go back to. So my goal, at least for me personally, is not to stay clean the rest of my life. It's that I made it to this milestone again, and I would like to stay clean. If that doesn't happen, then guess what? I have an app and I'll just press reset and I'll start over. But I'm never going to stop fighting. I'm never going to stop trying to not self-harm because it, it is only something that has literally physically hurt me. And um, I just don't deserve that and neither do you. So I hope um, if any of these skills helped hooray and maybe you learned something um and even if you don't self-harm i listed a lot of skills that are good just for grounding and distress tolerance 
So that's my story. Um, I don't have anything more to say. Otherwise, uh, if you stuck with me this long, congratulations, get yourself a cookie or drink some water, whatever you want to do. Um, but I really appreciate it. So thank you for supporting me and for all of us fighters out there, just keep fucking fighting. That's all we can do. Shitty cars we might have dealt, but we can keep fighting because I believe that we are warriors. I know that I am. And I bet if you're watching this video that you're a warrior too. So let's keep fighting the good fight.